In search of a turnaround in the midst of a difficult Big Ten season, it's the Indiana Hoosiers and the Minnesota Golden Gophers, two teams in the middle of the pack of the Big Ten square off on this Wednesday evening. Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Austin Render with Jack Grossman and Jack, Minnesota, definition of a roller coaster season. 12-0 to start, 1-7 after that, but it feels like they're getting it back on track. Yeah, after that 12-0 start, they lost seven of their next eight, but since that time, they've won two in a row, playing a lot better defense, held Northwestern 54 points, number 17 records to 46 in the previous 12 games. They had only held a team to 55 or less twice, so Lindsey Whalen's team playing a lot better def defense in recent times. Indiana has broken out some new uniforms today. For more on that, we welcome in the third member of our crew, Eddie Cotton with more on the uniforms. Thanks, Austin. Tonight's matchup between Minnesota and Indiana is going to have some extra meaning to it for the Indiana Hoosiers who are rocking special new alternate uniforms in honor of Black History Month as well as in honor of the 70th anniversary of Bill Garrett breaking the, the Big Ten color barrier for the Indiana. Now, the women's team are wearing these jerseys tonight. The men's team will be wearing these jerseys on Sunday against Ohio State. And if you pay attention, there are some nice nods to the Harlem Renaissance, an era that was so influential on the culture of basketball. And if you look at the individuals on this Indiana team, earlier this week Ben Duyaney talked about how meaningful it is to be playing tonight in a Black History Month celebration because her parents come from Liberia and she mentioned how important the African American cultural changes in this country have been to her success. Back to you Austin. Thanks Eddie and it's a new defense right now for Minnesota, new uniforms for Indiana, a new bit of a starting lineup for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. They've changed it a couple times this year. And it feels like this latest one they've gone to has given them the most success, obviously winning the last two. Garrido Perez and Brunson are new to the lineup. They've gone smaller, but Coach Whalen feels it's better for them defensively. Yeah, it is. Is It makes them a little bit more flexible on defense. They're able to guard one through four a lot better, and they're able to play more aggressive defensively also, try to get more steals, create more turnovers. And for the Hoosiers, it's the complete opposite. They've been the exact same starting lineup ever since the second game of the season. Yaney, Penn, Patrick, Royster, Wise. But the big key for Indiana is getting Allie Papper back on track. And it felt like at Nebraska she was doing that. Yeah, she had 22 points, 6 assists in that game. But most importantly, no turnovers. Turnovers have been a big issue for Indiana lately. Had 20 against Rutgers in the loss a couple of games ago. And to have Allie Patchberg lead the way and taking care of the ball is really important. The Hoosiers need her scoring output also. The 22 is huge. She shot the ball a lot better in that game. She was 8 of 12 from the field, 2 of 3 from behind the arc. Or in the previous five games before that, Patchberg was 9 of 39 from 3. So to see some consistency from her hitting threes will and scoring the ball will be very good for Indiana moving forward. Big game for her, big game for Kim Royster too. 19 points, 14 rebounds. If Indiana's going to want to win today against some of the size that Minnesota presents, they're going to need a good game from Kim Royster. Yeah, Kim Royster is has been off and on a little bit for the Hoosiers. Really great game against Nebraska. Really two of the best rebounding teams in the conference today. Indiana is second in the Big Ten in defensive rebounding. Minnesota third in offensive rebounding and rebounding margin. So whoever can win the rebounding battle today, going to go a long way to see who can gain the upper hand. Indiana Hoosiers 17-6 and six on the season, 6-5 and five in Big Ten play. They haven't won two games in a row since the calendar year flipped. They won on New Year's Eve and then they won the next game on January 6th. Meanwhile, for Minnesota, they finally got that second win in a row, a big one against the number 17 Rutgers Scarlet Knights. They're 15 and seven. Four and seven in Big Ten play, but I think this Minnesota team has more talent than their record. Yeah, now they have confidence to go along with it, going on the road, beating Northwestern, beating Rutgers at home. Confident bunch now in Minnesota. The Hoosiers and Gophers square off here on this Wednesday evening contest, an important one for both teams. And Minnesota will start the game with the basketball. Here's Bell with it, top of the key. 
Bell's the leading scorer for this Minnesota squad. Early shot doesn't go, and there's a big key today for the Hoosiers is rebounding, and they grab that one. Defensive rebounding, specifically Brenna Wise, a good start for the Hoosiers, closing out possessions, limiting second-chance opportunities. Minnesota third in rebounding in the conference, one of the best offensive rebounding teams, and a quick bucket for Brenna Wise. Really strong start for Wise, made a great cut, and the Gophers lost or on and able to lay it in. Brenna Wise has been a big first quarter contributor lately for Indiana. Did not have a great game at Nebraska, though. Just four points. Big bounce back start for Brenna Wise. The rebound for Royster. Again, defensive rebounding for the Hoosiers. So important. And Ali Paprick's success important as well. It really is. Indiana needs her to be the catalyst, both taking care of the ball and adding a scoring punch. Jalen Penn, a jumper. And that doesn't go. Here comes Kanisha Bell. Over 18 points a game for Bell. Over five rebounds and just about four assists. Brunson steps into a jumper, but that one's too strong. And another rebound for Brenna Wise. It's going to be interesting watching Bell and Ben Dugani, one of the better on-ball defenders in the conference. Brenna Wise, wide open three. That one doesn't go. Those are usually knockdown down shots for Brenna Wise. Yeah, that's one where if she gets five times, she'll hit four. Bell and AP honorable mention All-American last season. Misses the shot, but there's the key for the Gophers. Offensive rebounding. Scarito Perez who grabs it. They're really good with offensive rebounds are the Gophers. Brunson on the left wing. Now a pull-up jumper from Belo doesn't go. And the rebound to Pepper. The new uniforms for the Hoosiers, honoring Black History Month here in February. Just a one-time thing here on this Wednesday evening. The men's team, as Eddie said, will wear them on Sunday against Ohio State. Nine to shoot for Bendu Yaney and company. Wise will fire a three. Again off the mark. Yanny missed Royster there on the roll after she set the pick. Had her open, but didn't look at her. Slow start for the offenses. It's kind of how both teams want it to be, a defensive battle. Indiana's defense took a step back at Nebraska. There's a three ball. Garrido Perez knocks it down. Not a great three-point shooter at 31%, but man, she looked confident on that one. Had some space, let it fly, and drilled it. Can the Hoosiers find an answer just a few minutes in? They trail three to two. But again, Indiana, just both of these teams, roller coaster Big Ten season so far. Here's Patberg's fouled on her way to the basket. And they'll call that one on the floor. But Indiana, you look at their schedule, it's a win, win, loss, win, loss, loss, win, loss, loss, win. Just back and forth. They can't seem to get any traction in the Big Ten. Yeah, that's, that'll happen, though. The Big Ten's tough this year. Jalen Penn, wide open shot, doesn't go. But a good board by Brenna Wise. She can't get that to go. And loses her headband. Ben Duyaney with a big steal. Wise to the basket, lays it in. Ben Duyaney's going to be a big key today. Defending Bell, going to be the primary defender on her. Able to make a really nice hustle play that time. And found Wise to lay it in. What Ben Duyaney does best, she's now got a steal in nine straight games and another three from Garrido Perez. Yeah, Garrido Perez looking really confident on the stroke early. They need to get out on her and close out better. She's just wide open. Papper, a pull-up jumper doesn't go. And a fight for the board brings all three players to the ground. Maybe a little extracurricular. Royster appears to be a little shaken up on the play and I think she was coming out anyway. Yeah, that was a great hustle from both sides. Ali Patberg, though, needs to set her feet there. She rushed the pull-up jumper, didn't really look comfortable when she shot it. That's a shot she can hit, a pull-up jumper. She just needs to take her time, realize she has space, set her feet, and let it go. How about Garrido Perez? Averages two points a game. She's got the first six for Minnesota. Yeah, she has looked really comfortable so far and made a nice defensive play right there as well. Really coming out aggressive. Big block for Perez, and here she comes on the offensive end. Kicks it out for a three ball. 
And yeah, that's no good from Brunson, but there's that offensive rebounding prowess of Balo. And fouled on the three-point shot is Destiny Pitts. And three free throws coming up for the Gophers. You can't leave Destiny Pitts open from behind the arc. She's Minnesota's biggest outside threat. Was the Big Ten Freshman of the Year last year. In the last four games, she is 15 of 30 from behind the arc. Really shooting the ball well, up to 35% on the season. Penn closed out late, ended up fouling her. You just got to know where she is at all times on the floor. Knocks down the first free throw. Alexa Goulbe checked in at that last time out for Kim Royster. It's a, those two have shared a lot of minutes, and it's a key part to this Indiana team is getting good minutes out of Alexa Goulbe and not having her pick up quick fouls. Yeah, she's had trouble staying out of foul trouble all season long. She's fouled out five different times on the season. She's been in foul trouble a lot. That's kind of hindered her presence on the floor in her freshman campaign with Indiana. Another freshman, Grace Berger, also checks in as Destiny Pitts hits all three, and Minnesota jumps out to a quick 9-4 advantage. I like that Minnesota's showing the 1-3-1 one, one pressure there. Berger thought about a three. She'll pull up instead from mid-range, which is where she's usually solid. But misses that one, and Bell with a full head of steam. How about Taye Bello? Double-double average this season as she passes it off to Brunson, who misses the lane. Yeah, she has 18 or more rebounds in each of the last three games. <laughs> Just Bizarre. A machine. Golbe wide open for three. It doesn't go, but an offensive rebound for Ben Duyaney. Indiana, not a great offensive rebounding team. 12th in the Big Ten, but a big one there from Yaney. Can they convert? Berger misses. Golbe, another offensive rebound, but then she tumbles to the floor. And another jump ball will give possession to the Gophers. A timeout on the floor. A hot start for Minnesota and Garrido Perez. It's 9-4 Gophers on top of the Hoosiers here on BTN+. Plus. Welcome back here on BTN Plus to Simon Scott Assembly Hall. The Gophers have jumped out to a big lead, 9-4, off of a pair of threes from Irene Garrido Perez. Indiana shooting just 2 of 12 from the floor. These are two teams in the middle of the Big Ten standings right now. You can see Minnesota down there in 11th. They're 4-7, probably better than that record. I would expect them to pick up some more wins. But there's Indiana in 6th. That's an interesting spot for the Hoosiers because you know they've got their eyes set on that double bye. And if they want to do that, they've got some games in front of them they're going to have to win. Yeah, and there's a lot of tough games. There's a lot of opportunity out there for the Hoosiers. After tonight, five of Indiana's last six games come against teams that are in front of them in the standings. Ample opportunity to try to move up and get that double bye. That double bye is what everybody's looking for. Right now, Northwestern has it in that fourth position. Minnesota with a basketball. Here's Garrido Perez, who's been the offensive playmaker for the Gophers, but Bell's normally that, and she misses. Oh, big block by Alexa Goulbe, and then a foul. I really like Ben Duganey's aggressiveness on Bell early on, not making things easy for her. She's yet to find, find any rhythm from the floor. Of course, it hasn't mattered because her teammates have picked it up for her, but Ben Duganey doing a good job defensively early. Take a look and see it. Berger thought she got a lot of ball, but a little bit of the arm, and Kanisha Bell takes a trip to the free throw line and misses the first. Bell just 68% from the charity stripe on the year, but is third nationally in free throws attempted and fifth in mates. And she gets to the line a lot. That'll be the challenge for the Hoosiers to keep her off of the free throw line, but Minnesota has stretched the lead to six. 2-2-1 two, two, pressure this time. I like Minnesota pressuring IU with how much trouble they've had turning the ball over lately. Cool base blocked. It's been a block party here early from the two teams that are dead last in the Big Ten in blocks per game. Brunson, nowhere to go. Minnesota's defense has been stifling. Meanwhile, threes are falling and a couple free throw trips as well put the Gophers up six. Balo, not a bell. Two to shoot. Brunson has to fire and hits it. That's Bit. just that's just a tough shot beating good defense that time. 
Minnesota's in a rhythm right now, very comfortable offensively. Indiana's got to get going. Another one of those slow starts for the Hoosiers. They were down 17 to 12 at the end of the first quarter at Nebraska. They were held without a field goal for the final few minutes of that first quarter, but then they shot over 70% in the second. Yaney turns it over. Brunson with the steal. Pitts a transition three. Offensive rebound, she grabbed her own board and put it in. Pitts knew as soon as she let the ball go that it was going to be missed and did a great job hustling, getting the offensive rebound, putting it back in. Minnesota being a heck of a lot more aggressive than Indiana so far. They're overplaying passing lanes on defense, showing some full court pressure to kind of take Indiana out of its offensive rebounds. Indiana's been careless with the ball in response to it, and the Gophers sensing blood early in Bloomington doing a great job of grabbing the early lead. Best start the Gophers could have hoped for here. 14 to four. Indiana is two of 13 from the floor. Minnesota's only four of 14, but they have capitalized on some three pointers. Offensive rebounds have been huge for the Gophers today. Second chance opportunities, they've already got six points. Yeah, Indi Indiana's in a poor job closing out, out shots on the perimeter that's led to the two threes and the three free throws. That's nine points right there, the 14 Minnesota has. Again, this press by Minnesota has at least thrown Indiana's offense a little bit off timing-wise. And Lindsey Whalen doing a great job of mixing up the pressures. We've seen a 1-3-1, one, one, a 2-2-1, two, two, and that time a full-court man. That was a big move by Packer. The fake handoff clears her up for a lay-in. You see, that kind of settles Indiana down offensively a little bit. You need your leader to be a leader, and that's Allie Packer for this offense. Balo travels. See, the momentum kind of shifting a little bit. If Indiana get a basket here, they'll get a sense, even with as bad as they started, that they're still right in the game. Is it a good timeout from Perry Morin? Oh, absolutely. You needed to try to settle the team down at that point. So the press continues to be applied. Looks like they're in a 1-2-2 two, two this time. And it's their forward, Taye Bello, who's anchoring the top of it. That length makes it really hard for Pat Burke to see, as you can tell right there. Garrido Perez taps it to Balo, and Penn doesn't grab it, but at least knocks it away out of play. But it, like you said, that length, an issue with Taye Balo guarding up front on the press. When you're 6'2 and you're long and lanky like Balo is, and you can also move being quick, you can stay at the head of that press, pester the smaller guards, make passing lanes a lot smaller than what they are, and able to force turnovers. Well, Pitts turns it over herself. Minnesota's third turnover of this first quarter. As Grace Berger comes back into the game for the Hoosiers. Hoosiers only have two turnovers so far, but you can just tell they look uncomfortable. Minnesota's speeding them up offensively. This is a lineup you'd expect to see against a tall Minnesota team with both Royster and Goulbe in the game. Patberg misses the runner. Brunson off to the races, but she can't get it to go. That's one Brunson's got to finish there. Pair of layups missed on both ends. Pamper looks like she's searching for her shot, something she wasn't doing before that Nebraska game. An offensive foul on Kim Royster. And Padberg realizes that she needs to try to get the offense rolling right now. Another person Indiana try, needs to try to get going, Jalen Penn, 0 for 3 so far today. She's been in double figures in all 11 Big Ten games. I would argue she's the hottest Hoosier offensively throughout really Big Ten play, and she has been blanketed so far. No doubt about it, averaging over 16 points per game in conference play for Jalen Penn. And newly checked in, Annalise Lamke commits a foul as soon as she comes in. It's an illegal screen. Yeah, and that's an emphasis this year. They're calling a lot of those, really trying to emphasize it, and that's a good call there. Was not set at all. Easy moving screen. Penn, though, has seen her scoring average rise by five points per game. She's also seen her three-point percentage rise from 28 in non-conference play to 45 in league play. Really poor turnover from the Hoosiers, but a big block by Allie Pepper to save a bucket. Here's Yaney. Euro step to the basket. What a play by Ben Du Yaney. Really nice move from Yaney. I thought she was going to try to dish it off to Goulbe or Royster. Decides 
to take it herself, though. Really strong take. At the elbow, Pitts knocks it down. Big time jumper to kind of quiet a mini run from the Hoosiers. Penn's trailed Pitts on a couple of closeouts there. Each one poor the first time led to free three throws. This time Penn jumps wildly after a pump fake. Pitts calmly drains the mid-range jumper. But this is that big lineup that Minnesota can present. Lamke and Balo out there. Yaney misses a jumper and Lamke grabs the board. And Indiana's going to have to counter with the royster Gulbe combination. Yeah, and that's not a lineup Indiana's used often. So Terry Morin adjusting to Minnesota instead of trying to make Minnesota adjust to them. I don't know if they can keep with this lineup too long, though, especially with Gulbe's fouling issues and you don't want to play either one too many minutes. Could be interesting to see if Morin keeps doing this moving forward. But a five second difference between shot clock and game clock. But before Bell could get a shot off, they're going to say she took too many steps. And Indiana will get nine seconds to try and score double figures in this first quarter. It has not been a pretty first quarter for Indiana. Four of 17 from the floor, 0 for 4 from beyond the arc. Pat Berg, five to shoot. Struggling to get it across the timeline. Lost it, gets it back. Heaves at the horn, and it doesn't go. A lot of work to get not a great shot on that final possession, but a great first quarter for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. They lead the Hoosiers 16-8 here on BTN. Minnesota with a 16-8 lead. Their head coach, Lindsey Whalen, in her first season with the program. A unique story, a unique hire for Minnesota. For more, let's go to Eddie Cotton on the sideline. Thanks, Austin. Now, you opened up this broadcast talking about the roller coaster season that Minnesota is having so far. And if you're looking for an explanation, it probably has to do with the fact that there have been so many adjustments for this Minnesota roster. Now, Lindsey Whalen coming to this team while maintaining her career with the Minnesota Lynx in the WNBA, this is her first season at head coach. She's changed the entire defensive approach, switched them from a zone to a man-to-man -man scheme, and she's working with one of the most inexperienced rosters according to minutes in the entire Big Ten. So that's why this team has potentially been struggling earlier in the season, and Coach Whalen said, one of the main reasons for those struggles is when they're not shooting the ball, they need their defense to come up clutch, and we saw that so far in the first quarter against Indiana. Back to you. Thanks, Eddie. And yeah, unique story with the hire of Lindsey Whalen at the time, was still a member of the Minnesota Lynx, has since retired, but quite a hire. It made some noise around the women's basketball community, and now running this team up into a two-game win streak, and it feels like some progress being made for the Gophers. Yeah, it really was a splash hire. Lindsey Whalen leads the WNBA and wins for a player 307, won four WNBA championships, and was Minnesota's first All-American collegiately, so a big name to bring in to bring some excitement to the program. She's done that, and Minnesota recently has been gelling and responding at since the adjustment period of moving to her system. Kiana Worthen checks in as Jalen Penn picked up her second foul and Minnesota has stretched it out to a 10 point lead. I'm wondering if Lindsey Whalen's going to keep with the full court pressure as effective as it's been just because she really doesn't have too much depth right now. Four players for the Golden Gophers play 30 plus minutes and five play 24 plus. So I don't know if they just have the pure depth to be able to press an entire game against Indiana. Second chance points, that time benefiting Kim Royster and the Hoosiers. Now Bell will pull up jumper, nothing but nylon. And that's Bell's game. She's not going to kill you from the three-point line, but she's really good mid-ranging into the basket, and we see her break the score score bug there with her first field goal. Her 18.1 points per game ranked fifth in Minnesota history. She's averaging 18.6 this season and a big time defensive play by Ty a. Bello. Yeah, that's probably just not a smart take there by Royster going against the bigger Bello. There, that's not a matchup she's going to win too often one-on-one. -on -one. Garrido feeds to Bello. But she leaves that one way short looking for a foul and she doesn't get it. Ten Royster, point game. Royster did a good job uh, going back on the other end, though, defending well. Yaney misses, Royce to the rebound, and another second chance bucket for the senior forward. Royster, really aggressive so far, four points, four boards already. 
I like I like the way she's attacking the offensive glass. When we talked to the Minnesota staff before the game, they talked about how Waylon wants it to be more flow offensively, give them more creativity. It feels like so far in this game we're seeing that. Yeah, we have. We've seen it in terms of ball movement, player movement, getting open shots and hitting open shots. It's Minnesota's looked very fluid so far offensively, despite not shooting a great percentage. Yeah, only 7 of 20, Indiana 6 of 23. Neither team shooting it well, but Minnesota's getting to the free throw line. That's where Kanisha Bell is right now. Yeah, that was Kim Royster's second foul, so we're going to see a lot of Alexa Gould Bay here in the second quarter. A lot of Alexa Gould Bay, a lot of Brenna Wise coming down the stretch with Royster in foul trouble. She'll head to the bench, Alexa Gould Bay checks him. Just the third Hoosier from Latvia. Minnesota really good at drawing fouls in the line. Second most free throw attempts of any team in Division One. So they've already taken two starters and given them two fouls here with still 7.20 left to go before the break. Something just monitor for Indiana moving forward. Well, Bell gets one of two, and the Hoosiers yet to go to the free throw line with 7.15 to go in the second quarter. Yaney trying to get there. She gets to the bucket and finishes. Yaney and Royster have really been the catalyst for Indiana so far in this one, attacking both on the glass and attacking the paint. Yaney, Wise, and Royster all with four. Brunson nowhere to go. Garrido Perez shut off by Wise. And Bell will turn around and talk to her coach. Smart play there by Bell. Knew she had nothing. Wanted to reset and do a set here. Seven to shoot for Bell, working on Indiana's best defender who defends well and forces a missed shot. Brenna Wise looking to get going. Tipped out, nice play by Kanisha Bell. But Brenna Wise has been solid this season, averaging a little over 12 points a game, but only shooting 37.6% since Big Ten play began. Yeah, a little bit of wear and tear going up against the Big Ten Conference has seemed to kind of fatigue her a little bit at times. Kiana Worthen getting some good minutes with Jalen Penn out with two fouls. Indiana in some foul trouble. Both Penn and Royster have been saddled with a pair. Six to shoot. Papberg hunting inside, but a foul called before she could get the runner to go. A little arm bar from the Minnesota defense. Yeah, good call, very clear arm bar on that one. Indiana gets a fresh shot clock. So Papberg will inbound. Indiana not getting a lot of clean looks. Right there would have been a clean look, but a foul was called beforehand. It'll go on Destiny Pitts. Just three fouls called on the Gophers so far in this one. Divinia tries to establish Pat Berg on this possession. Just two points so far, no assists, only taking three shots. Yaney fortunate to get that one on the inbound and she's fouled. And so the first free throws of the game for the Hoosiers come with 6.03 to go in the second quarter. Ben Duganey has really jumped off the page of how well she's played in this game so far, being extremely aggressive on both ends of the floor, whether it be guarding Bell and Iso, as she's on the defensive end a couple seconds ago, or just relentlessly attacking the basket early. Ben Duganey showing the effort that the rest of the Hoosiers need to follow, not just tonight, but for the rest of the season. The last time Indiana was at home, they were taking on the, the Maryland Terrapins, and Coach Morin talked about attacking, attack the basket. That was the game plan, and it kind of feels like that's the game plan again here with Pat Berg and Yaney and Penn all attacking the basket. Yeah, and it hasn't yielded to the results that Morin would have liked so far, but they keep going to him. You keep attacking the bucket. You're going to draw fouls. You're going to get a lot of paint points, and it'll open up the three-point ball a little bit also. They're within five, 21 to 16, after both free throws fall for Ben Yaney. Destiny Pitts looks like she might have gotten away with a travel, and that is a travel. Better defense that time for Indiana, a little bit more active. Going back to the Hoosiers attacking the basket, those two free throws by Yaney, Indiana's first points that didn't come in the paint so far tonight. Other 14 points that all come in the lane. Kende Bayo, who checked in, the 
twin sister of Tae Bayo. Papberg wide open for three. Got it. Time out, Minnesota. Indiana's on a 9 1 run. Attacking the basket is what's changed the game. Indiana being way more aggressive in the second period, getting points in the paint, and that time the penetration leading to a wide open Alley Padford triple. Hoosiers hustling on both sides of the floor. A lot more effort here. Hoosiers within two, 21 19, Minnesota. 5.32 to go in the second quarter here on BTN Plus. Welcome back, Minnesota leading 21 to 19 over the Hoosiers, but a big three from Allie Papberg, who's trying to get her season back on track after a slow slump hurt her in Big Ten play. For more, here's Eddie Cotton. Thanks, Austin. Allie Papberg is trying to come back from a four-game stretch where she was 9 for 39 from the field with 18 turnovers. She did so last game against Nebraska with 22 points, going 8 for 12 from the field. And we see here she's already got five points on the night and a super clutch three there right before the timeout. But when we talked to her immediate availability earlier in the week, she talked about how she didn't make any changes to her shot, any changes to her routine. She just believed in herself and listened to her teammates that trusted her to get to this point. And she also said that these stretches are going to happen to everyone. What's important for her is to not make any changes and trust her game. And she's certainly trusting her game so far tonight. Thanks, Eddie. And Allie Papperg, as he's talking, gets to the free throw line and hits the first on a play that could have gone either way. Block charge. Those are always interesting to watch as the game develops. But misses the free throw that would have tied the game. And Minnesota clings to a one-point lead. It's an 8-0 run over the last two minutes for the Hoosiers. And in that two minutes, no buckets, obviously, for the Gophers. Kende Balo trying to do so, but a big steal by Bendu Yaney, and Gulbe ends up with it. Yaney pushing the pace. Worthen blocked away by Balo. Big play. So Worthen probably needs to pull it back out, set up the offense. Indiana's been running better offense here in the second. Run, run a set there. Like we said, twin sisters, Ty and Kende. Number five and number 20 in Maroon. Both from Southfield, Michigan. Garrido Perez, just the second ever gopher to play for Minnesota from Spain. That three no good from Bell, and here come the Hoosiers, another chance to take the lead. Kiana Worthen getting extended playing time after Jalen Penn picked up her second. Same goes for Alexa Goulbay with Kim Royster plagued with two fouls. Hoosiers having to adjust now, Minnesota in a zone. Papper almost carelessly turned it over. Five to shoot though, Worthen's gonna drive and a travel. That's the fifth turnover on the Hoosiers, seven for Minnesota. Looks like Indiana, they're a little confused against the 2-3 zone, a little stagnant there, not much movement. Needed to get the ball into the high post there to try to draw the zone into the middle, kick it out to shooters. Instead, Indiana's kind of drilled on the perimeter. First action for Lindsey Marchese since the Hoosiers were back at home against Maryland. And a loose ball collected by Bell right in front of us. Balo working on Wise, dumping it down for Lamke. And it's knocked out of bounds by Kiana Worthen. Really heads up play by Worthen to knock it out of bounds. She's given Indiana some more production in recent days. She's appeared in the last six games after not playing four of the first five Big Ten games, averaging 3.2 points per game in the last five, just 0.9 before them. Another defensive play by Worthen to knock it out of play, and she had scored in the previous four before the Nebraska game, only tallying one minute. But she's been hitting down, knocking down some threes in her time in games. Three to shoot. Are they going to get one off? They do not. Lamke's mugged inside. It's a shot clock violation. And another possession for Indiana to try and take the lead. But again, Minnesota has not scored in the last four minutes and change. Hoosiers a lot more active on defense, sealing 
off cutters, doubling the post like they did right there. Just a lot more aggressive defensively, closing out better on perimeter shots also. Minnesota's last bucket came at the 7.20 mark of this second quarter. They're overloading the right side, and that pass kicked by Garrido Perez. It'll stay with the Hoosiers. That's one where Garrido Perez was taking away Yaney so much. Packberg could have just had an easy crossover, dribbled their left, and gotten into the lane. Indiana hasn't scored in over two minutes as well, even though they're on an 8-0 run. Seven to shoot. Packberg turns it over. Bell on the run. Up against Yaney. Counted in a foul. Kanisha Bell earns another trip to the free throw line. And that will tag a foul on Bendu Yaney. It's just her first, but Yaney and the rest of this Hoosier crowd in disbelief. Yeah, you can see on the replay, Yaney definitely jumped into Bell. That's one you can't do that time. You're as good as Bell is, you're probably going to con conceive that layup in one way or another. You can't foul on top of it, allow her to get the three point play and pick up a personal. The free throw's good for Bell. It's now 24 to 20 Minnesota. Indiana had about three straight possessions where they could have taken the lead and instead they've turned it over on almost all of them, including this one. Yeah, Hoosiers, three turnovers down their last four possessions. Went back to the one three one full court pressure that time, but changing to the two three zone, completely taking Indiana out of their offensive re rhythm. Bell pull up jumper. Misses, and Patrick the rebound. Hoosiers need a bucket. Berger can't find it. It's tipped out. And Garrido Perez has it for the Gophers. The Golden Gophers started 12-0, lost seven of their next eight, but have since won two quality matchups against top four teams in the league. A road win at Northwestern, and a home win against a ranked Rutgers team, and now a travel call on the Gophers. Kind of sloppy play by both teams here lately. Indiana hasn't scored in 3-12. Both teams shooting the ball poorly, playing great defense. Gophers at 32%, Hoosiers at 29.6 currently. Now how much of this do you credit the defenses and how much has just been poor offense? As always, it's a little bit of both, but the defense, especially for Minnesota here the last few minutes, has really picked up. Switching to zone has completely taken Indiana out of the rhythm they had finally found. On the other side, Indiana's playing really aggressive defensively right now. And you can see both teams having trouble adjusting to it. Here, The other thing that's been a factor has been the full court pressure Minnesota that's applied on the Hoosiers forcing turnovers. Moving screen called on Brenna Wise and that will send her to the bench and Lindsay Marchese back in. Minnesota is in the bonus. The two teams have a combined 17 turnovers in this game. Another offensive board for the Gophers. That's their sixth. Bell might have gotten away with a walk or at least the Faithful here believe so. See if Bell attacked school bay. Yeah, a bit of a mismatch. Lamke working on Marchese doesn't get it to go. Very surprised Bell didn't, and you see another turnover, that Bell didn't try to attack school bay there one-on-one. -on -one. You had the mismatch. Bell's a lot faster, could have gotten around school bay, either drawn a foul or hit a layup. Terry Morin in disbelief. At that last turnover, it's number nine. Both teams have nine. As soon as Yaney threw the pass out of bounds, Terry Morin said, are you kidding me? It kind of feels like that. It's four turnovers in their last five possessions. Minnesota, on the other hand, just one of their last eight from the field. It has not been a pretty quarter, to say the least. Bell working on Patberg, lost it, but kind of shoved it into the hands of Lamke. Garrido Perez shuffles over for three and hits it. That's her third three of the game. She averages two points a game. She did a great job that time. If she didn't catch it cleanly, she had a pump fake to draw the defender away from her. Then she resettled herself and was able to drill a triple. A foul called on Destiny Pitts. It's just the fourth on Minnesota. 
So Indiana will be in the bonus from here on out. No, that is the it's the fifth. So it will put Ben Duyani on the free throw line. Greta, Greta Perez really has been the difference in this game so far. The 3-3 three three she's hit, only averaging the two points per game, as you said. Unexpected production for the Golden Gophers. Yaney misses the first, and Indiana just cannot buy a bucket right now. Garrido Perez had just played in a couple games, has started the last four. Yeah, she's seen her output really increase lately. As you said, started the last four games, playing 33 and a half minutes per game in those four. In the first 17 games, only 11.6. So she's playing a lot more and relishing in the added playing time. Both free throws missed for Ben Duyaney. And Indiana looks like they'll be stuck on 20 at halftime. And we'll end the half with a five minute scoring drought. Can Minnesota tack on? Bell, a jumper. Nope. Offensive rebound. Perez has to heave at the horn. It doesn't go. And that is how the first half ends. The Hoosiers don't score in the final five minutes of the second quarter. Minnesota takes a 6-0 run to the locker room and a 27-20 lead over the Indiana Hoosiers. It's halftime. Stay tuned. You're watching BTN+. Plus. Welcome back to Simon Scott Assembly Hall. It's Minnesota 27, Indiana 20. The Gophers lead by seven, but it was not a pretty second quarter, Jack. No, it was not. We saw Indiana go scoreless for the final 5-14 in the second quarter. Minnesota struggled mightily offensively as well down the stretch. We saw both teams playing a lot of great defense, focusing on Indiana. Minnesota went to a 2-3 zone after Indiana was able to cut the lead to one at 21-20, about five and a half minutes left in the second quarter. Then Minnesota switched to a 2-3 zone. Indiana stopped attacking, thus leading to a big scoring job. And yeah, Minnesota shot the ball well from three, maybe not from the field, but 43% from the three-point line. A couple things that Rhett Wiersba, the assistant coach of Indiana, might have wanted to work on. He talked to our sideline reporter, Eddie Cotton, about that. Let's go to Eddie now. Thanks, Austin. I talked to Rhett Wiersba, the assistant coach for Indiana ba women's basketball, and he said... On offense, the team needs to take care of the ball more. There have been too many unforced errors, just giving up possession. And they need to learn how to handle the pressure. They need to turn that pressure into an advantage for themselves. They're forced. They're being forced out of their game and the way they want to play, and they need to take that and change it around. Now, on defense, they've been doing a few things well, but th number 31 from Minnesota can't get in as many open shots, according to Durrett, and they're giving up way too many offensive rebounds. So look to see if they make those changes here in the second half. Back to you, Austin. Thanks, Eddie. And a quick start for the Gophers. Kanisha Bell gets a shot to fall, and Minnesota's lead is back to nine. And another tough look. It doesn't feel like Indiana's getting any easy looks in this game. They really aren't. Minnesota's done a great job defending. On Minnesota's first offensive possession, though, they're able to get a switch, and Bell was matched up with Jalen Penn. Attacked Penn. Penn not trying to pick up a third foul. Kind of put a little bit of Matador defense that time, letting Bell score. So Kanisha Bell with the basketball at nine in the first half, now up to 11, and a foul called on Kim Royster, and that's important because it is her third. Yeah, it is, and Royster's been really good for the Hoosiers tonight. It's no coincidence that Indiana scoring drought started when Royster went to the bench. She was so good getting offensive rebounds, finishing around the rim, playing great defense. Big loss for the Hoosiers right now. Kanisha Bell up to 12 points, four of six so far tonight from the free throw line as Alexa Goulbe comes in for Kim Royster. That's about right on her season average there, 68% from the free throw line. Got both of them to go on that trip and the biggest lead of the game for the Gophers. It's up to 11 and a turnover. Ben Duyaney and Ali Papper have been turning the ball over a lot in the backcourt. Yeah, that's just unforced right there. That's Yaney's fourth of the night. Padberg has three of her own. And, and that's about the fourth time we've seen just an Aaron pass just trying to bring the ball to the court. That's seven of their ten turnovers as a team coming from that backcourt duo. Brunson, a pull-up jumper from the free throw line is perfect. And Minnesota's up 13. I might wonder if Terry Warren might not call a timeout here soon. This continues for another couple possessions. Indiana totally out of sync right now. 
They blitzed Rutgers, did Minnesota, in the third quarter. And it feels like that's what they're doing to Indiana right now. But Allie Patberg steps up with a jumper. That's a big shot there for Patberg. And the Hoosiers finally ends the scoreless drought. Once they break the press, it feels like there's open looks to be had. But Indiana struggled to break the press. Yeah, even when they have, though, there's not always open looks. It's when Indiana's getting their nose down, attacking the basket is really where they've had success. Driving right past School Bay and laying it in is Ty Balo. Gophers have hit their first three shots here in the second half. Papper scoops it over to Yaney. Yaney drives, another miss, but an offensive rebound from Gould Bay and she's attacked in a jump ball. Good job by Gould Bay to be able to fight for the ball, get the jump ball, Indiana keeps possession. Hoosiers need to get Jalen Penham involved. Sat much of the second quarter with two fouls, but even before then, 0-4 from the field, hasn't scored yet. She's been Indiana's leading scorer throughout the past five, six games, and Indiana's hottest scorer offensively in Big Ten play. They need to get her going. Good cut by Brenna Wise, but she couldn't finish, and then Ben Duyaney came through and she's fouled. Another steal for Ben Duyaney, then she's pushed to the side by Destiny Pitts. So it's Indiana basketball. Heads up play by Ben Duyaney. That'll be the third steal Yaney will get credited for on the night. And she's really been Indiana's lone bright spot so far. The way she's played aggressively, both offensively and defensively. They're going to need some sort of run here in this third quarter. They trail by 13 on their home floor where they've lost two of three. Jalen Penn is fouled by Garrido Perez. And the fouls tacking up a little bit on the Gophers. That's their second of this young third quarter. Yaney will trigger the inbound for the Hoosiers. To Penn, open three. No good, but another offensive rebound for Indiana. First open look, Penn's had all night. Each team now with seven offensive boards. Brenna Wise is fouled. Hoosiers getting close, getting the bonus already. 13 foul against the Gophers. Just one more foul to give before going into the penalty for the rest of the quarter. Indiana, maybe if you can get free throw shooters like a Brenna Wise and Allie Patberg. Wise especially, is 93% from the charity stripe on the season. You can kind of eat back without out, uh, time coming off the clock when you're scoring. Brenna Wise, prolific free throw shooter. Second in the Big Ten with 92.6% from the free throw line. Got them both there. Brenna Wise, Pittsburgh transfer, owns Pittsburgh's record for most free throws made in the game without missing. 13 out of 13 a couple of years ago. Also a second on Pittsburgh's list was 11 out of 11 about a month before she hit 13 out of 13. Well, she's 89 of 96 this season and Indiana's down by 11. Indiana throwing a bit of a defensive change at this Gopher squad. And Yaney gets a deflection. And that's a good idea there by Terry Morin. The Gophers have really opened out the second half hot from the field, hit their first three shots, throwing something else at them, making them think, trying to get them out of their rhythm, and it's similar to what Minnesota did to Indiana in the second quarter. Four to shoot for this Gopher squad. They lob it in the Lampke. Three to shoot. It's in the hands of Bell. And the pull-up jumper no good. It's out of bounds off of Taye Bello. And great, Indiana will take it. Great job by Jalen Penn that time. Fighting for the rebound with the bigger Bello. Even with the two fouls, able to get the ball out of bounds and gain possession. Papperg races across the timeline. Scoops to Wise. Wide open three. Left it short. Is it possible to be too open? That because time, she might have been. Well, Wise... Wise did not have a clean catch that time. She had to regrip and try to regain herself there before she shot it, and I think that's why she missed it. Balo continues to get offensive boards. It's her sixth rebound of the game. Yeah, double. Balo will do that. Double-double <laughs> machine averages 10 points and over 12 rebounds. Three offensive rebounds in this game. Tough shot from Bell doesn't go, and this time... The eighth best defensive rebounder in the conference, Brenna Wise, grabs it. Pat 
Hartberg, a hard foul. And she looks to be shaken up. Looks like she's holding her wrist. See on the replay. Hard foul here. She drove to the basket, got tangled up with Annalise Lamke. Looks like she was accidentally tripped. And it looks like a timeout as Terry Morin's going to sit with Allie Patberg and the trainer holding her left or her right shoulder. In a 35-24 game, we watch it again and just tripped up. I mean, incidental contact and landed wrong on that right side. Hit a very awkward landing. And she's up and walking, but appears to be in a lot of pain and will go straight to the locker room. So painful injury for Allie Patberg and just when Indiana had Patberg getting back on track, leading the team with eight points on three of five shooting, five rebounds, that's gone for the time being as Patberg takes herself to the locker room with an injury. And Grace Berger in for the Hoosiers. It's where Indiana really needs Jalen Penn to step up. And the second leading scorer in Big Ten play needs to find their offense here. Gould Bay clears some space and lays it in. That's a big time move from Alexa Gould Bay. 35-26, a little life in the crowd as the Hoosiers within single digits. Back to the 2-3 zone as well. Like actually 2-1-2 zone. Yeah, Goulbe possessing the middle. Brunson working on Jalen Penn. Six to shoot. Bell an open three. Big time shot for the preseason. First team all Big Ten, Kenesha Bell. And that's what all Americans do. Indiana starting to get some confidence going on a little bit of a run. Silences the crowd. Dagger in the hearts of Indiana there. Ben Duyaney going to need to step up with the loss of Ali Papper. Here's Jalen Penn to the hoop. Scoops, but doesn't get it to fall. And two free throws coming up for Jalen Penn. Yeah, you know, lucky there. Looks like Bello had her feet set, but I think she was in the restricted area, so that's an automatic blocking foul. Good call. As we see on the replay. Now she's outside of the restricted area. But looks like she got there a little late. Just yeah, a just late. a little late. But Jalen Penn at the free throw line. And the first point of the game for the sophomore who's leading the team in scoring since conference play has began. 16.4 points per game in conference play. Let's see if this kind of gets her into a rhythm. Indiana really needs her scoring right now, especially without Pat Berg in the game. She's really become the number one scoring option for the foreseeable future. At 20 points at Nebraska, shooting 45% from the three in conference play. They're going to need a few of those to drop. Down by 10, under five in the third quarter. It's up from 28%, she shot non-conference play. Has been dealing with an ankle injury almost all season, but it feels like she's put that behind her in conference play. Bell working on Penn. Bell got wide open underneath, missed the shot, but Gould Bay commits the foul. Yeah, probably not a great idea to leave Bell wide open <laughs> right under the basket. Lucky that that didn't turn into an and one. Free throws coming up for the leading score for the Gophers. She's got 16, and she'll try to add to it on the other side. But this time out, it's 38-28 Minnesota on top here on BTN+. Plus. Minnesota has jumped out to a 10-point lead here halfway through the third quarter, and part of that is because of Indiana's loss of Allie Papberg with a gruesome injury. For more, let's go down to our sideline reporter, Eddie Cotton. Yeah, I was over here in the corner where she got hurt, and she fell on her forearm and slid across the floor and immediately grabbed her shoulder. Now, you can see in the replay, Brenna Wise went over to try and pick her up, but immediately realized in the effort to do so that there was no way she was going to be able to pick her up. They eventually, trainer came over took her to the locker room. I, we don't know yet if she'll be able to come back, but going by the Indiana timeout and listening to Terry Moore, and she talked to her team about how they cannot foul for the rest of this game. No fouling, and they're going to make an adjustment on three-point shooters. They're going to try and hedge on screens. Back to you, Austin. 
They, they've done a better job in this quarter. Just two team fouls as Jalen Penn scoop and score for the sophomore and her first bucket from the field. Big bucket there. Jalen Penn taking it to the basket. That's where Indiana's had their success today. Yeah, getting points in the paint. 18 in the paint so far tonight. See if that kind of gets her into that rhythm that Indiana needs to get her in. Not fouling, though. That's a tough thing to do against Minnesota as often as they get to the free throw line. They're testing that freshman, Delaney Byrne, who just checked in. 6'2 freshman from Arvada, Colorado. Averages just under six minutes a game and just a point per game. Brunson steps into an open jumper and hits it. Yeah, they forgot to hedge on the screen there. She they're, says, uh, if you're going to yeah. leave me that open, I'll shoot it. Yeah, and he said they're going to try to hedge on screens, and there just wasn't a hedge that time. Miscommunication defensively. 41-31, Minnesota leading by 10. Berger inside and finishes. Indiana's most points in a quarter so far today. They've got 13, but they've still got an uphill battle to go. That's twice, where Gould, that's twice now where said they're trying to hedge ball screens out of the timeout. Two straight ball screens. Gould Bay does not hedge. First one leads to a layup. Second one leads to free throws. They'll send Jasmine Brunson to the line, a 66% free throw shooter, but it's asking a lot of Minnesota to miss free throws. First on its way, and no good. They have... Missed quite a few today, though. They are now 9 of 13. Yeah, the Gophers aren't a great free throw shooting team. They're at 68% yeah, for the season. They get there a lot, though. Yeah, that, that's the thing. They shoot such a high volume of free throws. It, it matters that they don't shoot a great percentage, but it almost doesn't matter because they hit a good enough percentage to where they're still making a huge impact by getting to the charity stripe. So it's now a 9-point game, 42-33. Yaney continues that mantra of attacking and finishes. Minnesota hasn't had an answer in the last couple possessions for Indiana's aggressiveness. Hoosiers have hit their last four field goals. Yaney has eight points on the night. All eight of those points have come from either attacking the basket and hitting a layup or free throws that came from attacking the basket. Eight points, five rebounds, three assists for Yaney. And a charge. Brenna Wise steps in. On the attack from Kanisha Bell and head coach Lindsey Whalen is not happy. Let's look at it again. It's a tough call. Yeah, block charges are always tough. I think they had that one right, though. You know, Wise had her feet set. She was straight up and down. I, I think they got it. So the Hoosiers with it, down seven, a chance to creep within two possessions. Yaney navigates. Kim Royster at the scorer's table. She's got three fouls, hasn't played a lot in this half. Penn drives and a foul called. It's on the floor, but that doesn't matter. Two free throws are coming up with Indiana in the bonus. Hoosiers know they're in the bonus and they're getting back to dribble drive attacking the basket. So Jalen Penn, a good free throw shooter, 74%. Really hasn't been there as much as maybe she would like this season. First one rims around, hits every part of the rim, maybe even twice, and then falls out. Had the old announcer's jinx there. Not what I intended, but <laughs> I guess it comes with the job. <laughs> Jalen Penn's second free throw is good. Gets one of two, and Indiana's within six. Brenna Wise went to the bench as Kim Royster came in, so the big lineup for the Hoosiers with both Royster and Goulbay. Taking a chance playing Royster with the three fouls here. Destiny pits for three, it doesn't go. And that's fortunate when she's shooting 50% in her last four games. Penn navigates the lane, blocked away by Destiny Pitts, but she was out of bounds when she grabbed it. So it'll stay with the Hoosiers. I thought they were actually gonna get a foul there against uh, the Gophers with Jalen Penn back on the line. Called it a clean block and he gets the ball back anyways. We see on the replay. Yeah, I thought Pitts got her in the hand that time. It's interesting. These are the two two worst teams in the Big Ten in blocks, and already four for the Gophers, and Indiana has a couple as well. Both teams average three blocks per game. Yaney a screen from Royster. Kicks out to Penn. The three ball doesn't go, and the rebound out to Pitts. Penn short-armed the three that time. Looked like she rushed it a little bit. That's why it was short. 
Pitts for the answer and got it. Can't leave Pitts open. She will beat you every time if she has that much space to shoot a three. Started 0 for 3. You figured one was going to fall eventually, and it finally does. A lot of contact, no call, and Yaney finishes on the other end. You're really having trouble keeping Yaney out of the lane on straight line drives, one-on-one. -on -one. Yaney beating her her uh, marked person off the dribble. Indiana's five of their last six, but they're struggling to make up any ground. Still down seven. They were down as many as 13, though. Balo against Goulbay, who gets the block, but then Balo gets it back. Out to Pitts for three. No good. And the long rebound, a nice block out by Berger to give possession to the Hoosiers. That was perfect defense that time of how Terry Morin wants in the end defending ball streams that time. Royster had a hard hedge, forced Brunson to change direction. Goulbay with perfect health defense, sliding in, building a wall, staying vertical against Bello, causing a missed shot and eventually a turnover. Berger to Penn, another three ball. That one doesn't go. Offensive rebound, Brenna Wise. Kicks it out for Yaney. Yaney gets in the lane. Now to Berger. Berger, that's got to be a charge it is. Yeah, good call that time. Maybe got to pull up. She's a mid-range specialist. Maybe just pull up at the elbow there. Yeah, I liked how they got her driving off a of ball movement there as uh, Yaney driving open to Belain for her, but she needs to just make a nice jump stop and hit an eight-foot jumper. That time. Hits was set for a few minutes, it felt yes. like, on that one. <laughs> a minute and some change to go. You're in the third quarter and Minnesota holds the same lead they did at halftime. And a foul underneath is going to send Minnesota to the line. It was a bad touch foul that time from Wise. Terry Morin in disbelief. It's the second foul on Brenna Wise. Both Berger and Royster have three. Penn also with two. And Pitts hits the first free throw, a 76% shooter from the stripe. Stretches the lead back out to eight. They led 37 to 30, or 27 to 20, excuse me, at the break. It's been a much better offensive quarter for both teams. With a minute to go, Indiana finds themselves down nine. Palin, Penn lost her balance, and they're going to bail her out with a foul. Yeah, Garrido Perez not happy about how that one, and I don't blame her. Yeah, I thought, and that's what Coach Whalen's asking for is a travel. Felt like a little bit of a stumble from Jalen Penn, but Garrido Perez picks up the foul. It's her second, and the first free throw good for Jalen Penn. Foul trouble on both ends. Three on Pitts and Balo, and two on Brunson, Bell, and Garrido Perez, as well as Lampke for Minnesota. Penn hits them both, back within seven under a minute to go. Penn just one of eight from the field tonight, but five of six from the charity stripe in the third quarter, getting her in the score sheet. 47-40 Minnesota, each team has scored 20 in this quarter. Brunson, wide open jumper, rims out in a fortunate sequence for the Hoosiers. Kiana Worthen checked in at that last dead ball. Yaney missed Penn wide open on the wing. Worthen on the right wing, a screen from Royster. Worthen turns it over. And Garrido Perez might have missed a fast break opportunity there. She slows it up and Minnesota will hold it for one shot. Not a, not a terrible idea. I know there was a fast break opportunity, but Garrido Perez not a phenomenal ball handler. Make sure you get the last shot, worst case scenario, up seven. Kanisha Bell has the ball in her hand with five to shoot. Spins inside and a foul call as Kiana Worthen got tangled up with Bell. But she'll head to the free throw line. Five of 15 from the floor for Kanisha Bell. So the defense has been pretty good, but the issue is this will be her 10th and 11th free throws in this ball game. Yeah, and she's six and nine from the charity stripe so far tonight. Very quiet 17 points for Bell because she's done so much of her work from the free throw line. Berger comes in for Worthen. Tough sequence for her with the turnover and a foul. Yeah, that's one though, if Yaney's able to find Penn, who was wide open for a full two or three seconds on the perimeter, maybe she hits a three. That could be a five point swing at the end of the quarter. 
Bell misses the second. Yaney grabs it in a half court heave on its way, and it's too strong. Yaney started walking back like it was right on line, and it was, but too strong. And Minnesota extends the lead to eight as we head to the fourth here on BTN Plus. Minnesota leads 48 to 40 as we head to the fourth. Indiana scored 20 points in that quarter, but the issue for them is Minnesota scored 21. Yeah, the defensive lapses mounted in the third quarter for both teams. Of course, both teams also played a lot better offense. Indiana needs to find a way to string some stops and keep scoring offensively to try to get back into it. So Minnesota with the basketball, leading by eight. Again, no Allie Patberg. She went down with an injury in that third quarter and went straight back to the locker room with a lot of pain. Bell to the basket, shifts inside, but misses the shot, but there's Balo to put it back in. That's only Bayo's second field goal. Hoosiers has done a great job containing her scoring-wise. She still has her nine rebounds, but that's just kind of a given with that, how good of a rebounder she is. <laughs> She's only had two games this season with less than seven rebounds, which is incredible. Bendu Yaney shovels the pen down the baseline. Pull up Jay left short, and another rebound. There's the tenth of the game for Taye Balo. 50 to 40, Minnesota's kind of been on cruise control, leading by between eight and 12 for most of the second half. Indiana had it at six at one point, but a big three from Destiny Pitts. Here's Bell for a step back three, doesn't go. Yeah, that's not a great shot there from Bell. She can get that anytime she wants. Almost a really good pass, and it turns into yet another turnover for the Hoosiers, their 13th. That was a good idea from Grace Berger, but that's such a needle to thread there. Might not have been worth it. Got it to Penn, but just not high enough for her to corral it. A stat for Indiana, one of nine from three-point line. That's not something that Indiana usually does. They're 36% from three, and they're just not getting them to fall and not really getting good looks today. Yeah, they've had a few good ones. Jalen Penn's had a good look. Other than... The one that they actually hit, Pat Burgs, was a good look. Wides had a couple of chances, but Minnesota's played really good defense on the perimeter. They played a little volleyball there for a sequence, and Indiana comes away with it. Berger, high off the glass, set in. And the five-star Louisville recruit knocks it down. Nice little behind-the-back move there to be able to create some space. Kind of been wanting to see more from Grace Berger. Hadn't scored double digits since January 6th. She's got four today. Pits to the basket, a foul, but the shot doesn't go. Two free throws coming up for Destiny Pitts. This will be a big opportunity for Berger. She's going to be in a lot of playing time the rest of the night with Pat Berg presumably well, out in the last year foul, otherwise. Though. <laughs> yeah, so much for that logic, but... <laughs> No, we'll see if Terry Morin trusts the freshman, leaves her in, tries to let her run the show some. And your options are Grace Berger and Kiana Worthen right now. If you're Coach Morin without Allie Patberg available, the trainers have come back out to the bench for Indiana, but no Allie Patberg. She remains in the locker room. It's back to a 10-point game. And this pressure continues to bother Indiana, three seconds to get it across the timeline. Berger does so. Good ball movement from the Hoosiers. Jalen Penn misses but fouled. That'll be four now on Destiny Pitts. And boy, are the whistles blowing in this second half. It's the fourth on Pitts, who has been quietly accumulating some points here of late. Seven of seven from the line to add to her 14 points. Yeah, quite a good way to put it. Both her and Bell, the two double-figure scorers in the night for the Golden Gophers, doing a lot of their damage at the charity stripe. I think it's safe to say any offense in this game has been fairly quiet. Good point. 52-43 Minnesota is one of two fall for Penn, and Indiana's going to need to mount a run sooner rather than later as the time continues to tick. The clock, Minnesota's best friend. Looking for their third straight Big Ten win. Indiana looking for their second. Halo back outside to Garrido Perez. A nervous energy in this building. 
All the way around the horn, Pitts for three. In and out, but an offensive rebound and a put back for Taye Bello. They've done a good job on Bello keeping her from having those easy putbacks, but at a crushing time there for Indiana, she's able to get one. Berger trying to work around Bell. Yaney to Penn. Indiana needs offense. Penn will pull up and hit. That's a deep two with a foot on the line. And it gets Indiana back within nine. Still a big shot though for the Hoosiers. And it starts on this end. Indiana's defense in the first half was pretty good, 27 points allowed. Minnesota's already scored 27 in what's been in the second half. As Yaney thought she had a block, but might have given her a high five underneath it. 18th foul they've called in the second half. I thought that was a good one as uh, was a little bit of a high five. That, that was kind of cleaner than of what ball. I thought on the replay. That was a lot of ball. Yeah, Terry Morton clearly not happy with it. but I don't know if she's not happy with the foul or all of the fouls that they have made in this game. Foul trouble update. Berger has four, Royster has three, and two for Yaney, Penn, and Wise for the Hoosiers. For the Gophers, four for Pitts, three for Balo, and two for Brunson, Bell, Dorito Perez, and Lamke. Bell hits them both, or hits one of two, and now it's a 10 point game. Look for Indiana to play through Yaney and Penn here down the stretch. Goulbay in for Royster. Yaney to the basket. The floater doesn't get the touch, and Minnesota gets the rebound. Brunson calls off help and takes it across the timeline. Let's see if they give it to Bell here. He's got Grace Berger, the freshman, with four fouls on her. Let's see Bell works her one-on-one -on -one if they can get her the ball. We talked about it before the game. There's, there's a lot of talent on this Minnesota team, and that 4-7 and seven record doesn't quite show that. Yeah, it really doesn't. This is a team that has a lot of talent. They're missing some also with uh, Godiva Hubbard missing all the season up to this point with an injury, but they, they're a team that's gelling at the right time. The ball deflects into the hands of Garrido Perez, who has just been phenomenal. Four of four from the floor, 11 points. That's a dagger. It might not be the dagger, but that's a dagger to where, where a pass goes wild, ends up right in Perez's hands, and she drills a shot. That's a career high for Garrido Perez. Bay searching the lane, and a foul called. It's just the second on Minnesota in this quarter. But the Gophers were in the AP poll for the first 10 weeks of this season. They're back, or three straight weeks now, have been in the uh, receiving votes category. Receiving just two votes this week after their 2-0 record. Penn misses, gets her own board, searches for the put back and finds it. 10-point game. Relentless there from Jalen Penn. Hoosiers need a stop, though. We'll see if and how long Terry Morin can wait before trying to extend pressures herself to try to get some turnovers. We hit the five-minute mark in this fourth quarter, and Minnesota with a comfortable 10-point lead in a defensive battle here at Assembly Hall. Hoosiers trying to stay in the hunt for a double bye. A loss here would hurt that as Lampke turns and finishes. Annalise Lemke, who's been taken out of the starting lineup as of late, but contributing off the bench for the Gophers. The Hoosiers will feed Goulbay, who's fouled, and free throws coming up for the freshman, but a timeout will occur first. Can the Hoosiers fight back? They got four and a half minutes to make up 12 points. The Gophers up 59-47 here on BTM Plus. A pair of bubble teams in the NCAA tournament are battling it out tonight in Minnesota with the upper hand so far, 59 to 47 right now Minnesota on the outside looking in Indiana is one of those teams that Minnesota is looking in at but this is a big win if Minnesota can hold on yeah it's a huge win both in terms of trying to make the NCAA tournament and just in terms of building that momentum that the Gophers have built up in the last two games building off of a win at Northwestern beating a ranked Rutgers team at home and going on the road to Bloomington those are three very hard games to win individually to win them consecutively Lindsey Whalen's squad has to be 
at an all-time high in confidence, assuming they can finish this one off. Gold Bay hits both free throws. Both these teams have a gauntlet of a schedule remaining with a lot of the top four teams in the conference on their remaining schedules as Yaney sticks her foot in the passing lane. The Hoosiers still have to play Rutgers, Iowa, Northwestern, and Purdue, and Michigan State. Minnesota will play Northwestern, Purdue, Maryland, Rutgers, and Michigan State. Jumper for Destiny, Pitts is pure. Pitts is great on catch and shoot situations as we've seen a few times tonight. Coming off a curl that time, way too easy. Minnesota comfortable lead here as Penn hits her first three of the game and a timeout called by Terry Morin who's upset with Brenna Wise about that last defensive sequence. But a timeout on the floor, it's a media timeout, so we'll take it with them. Minnesota leading 61-52 as Indiana searches for one last surge here on B. Welcome back to Simon Scott Assembly Hall. The Minnesota Golden Gophers leading Indiana 61-52 to with four minutes left. Again, no Allie Papberg for the Hoosiers. She suffered an injury about halfway through that third quarter and has been in the locker room ever since. Appeared to be in a lot of pain on her way off the floor. Bell sees an opportunity, can't quite get it to go, and a loose ball picked up by Grace Berger for Indiana. Big possession here, if Indiana get a bucket, they could still find a way to get back into it. Wild play there, but Penn gets away with it. Looking at Yaney or Penn here, that's been where Indiana's found their offense in the second half. No need to rush yet, get some good offensive possessions. A Penn three would help, it doesn't go. Got a good look, just Penn hasn't shot the ball great tonight, despite her 16 points, which will all come in the second half. And Ty Balo grabs yet another rebound. She has six points and 13 rebounds. Just another ho-hum rebounding performance for her. She had 18 or more in the last three before this one. Bell, a pull-up jumper from the elbow doesn't go, and it's tipped out to Brenna Wise. Still time for the Hoosiers, but they need points. Berger misses the shot. It's tipped up into the air, and Garrido Perez ends up with it for the Gophers, and another empty trip for the Hoosiers. One of Berger uh, takes her time there. There, uh, That's where the game slows down for upperclassmen, where it doesn't for freshmen. She had Brenna Wise wide open behind her. She needs to be able to realize that, take her time, turn behind, and hit Wise, who's a very capable three-point shooter there. Maybe could have gotten it to a six-point game. Brunson into the corner. Bell for three. And that's an air ball too strong. Indiana maybe a must-score possession. Penn to the basket if she does so. And a timeout called by Minnesota. It's a 30-second timeout. You're Indiana, you're still in a position where you're definitely not fouling yet. You're trying to create a turnover though. Though you can't press here because you're going to have the ball up at half court. So you need to try to maybe get a half court trap maybe. Try to trap the inbound bounds pass when it's caught. Try to force it into a corner. If not, you got to play sound defense and you need to stop. Crash the defensive glass. You can't afford to leak out and try to get an easy transition bucket here because of how good Minnesota is on the offensive backboard. The players on the floor for Minnesota, when it, if it does come down the fouls, Destiny Pitts is a 76% free throw shooter, the best of the bunch. Bell is a 68% shooter. Actually, Garrido Perez is 100%, four for four. That's uh, small sample size. Though. Brunson is 66, and then Balo is 63. So if you're playing the percentages, Balo's the one to foul. Bell skips it over to Garrido Perez, and now with under two to go, Minnesota will settle down. Expect, your, expect them to try to isolate Bell or run some type of high ball screen action. Brunson working the offense. Balo slides underneath, can't get it to go, and Gould Bay grabs the board. Phenomenal defense that time from Gould Bay. Hoosiers need to score, and they need to score rather quickly. And not a lot of time to play with for the Hoosiers. Brenna Wise, an open three. Got it! Big time three for Brenna Wise. 
Indiana's within four with a minute 20 to go. Don't need the foul, just good sound defense again is what Indiana's looking for. Playing for Ali Papper who went down with a tough injury in the third quarter and has not come back out since. Bell to the lane, another miss. Gulbe tips it out and Yaney has it under a minute to go. Yaney slides inside, out to Berger. Not a ton of time for the Hoosiers, 45 seconds. Berger, tough shot, tips it out to Gulbe. 14 to shoot, Gulbe a wild foul. shot doesn't go. And Garrido Perez has it and she's fouled. Poor possession there from Indiana. Berger panicked a little bit once she got into the lane, tried to force a shot. Gulbe, same thing, two freshmen there, trying to force shots. You had to get it to Yaney or Penn. That's where you've gotten your offense in the second half. Now to an 8-0 run for Indiana, but unless they get a turnover, it's going to be tough for them as they're trying to fight the clock now. That's only the second team foul on the Hoosiers. So they have quite a few fouls to go before they send Indiana to the line with 35 seconds to play. The Gophers lead by four and a missed opportunity for the Hoosiers. And it, th that possession might have shown the most of not having Ali Papper. Yeah, and the Hoosiers have really tried to overcome that there. They've gotten Jalen Penn going, even though she's not shooting the ball well. 5 of 15 on the night. Ben Duganey as well, adding in 10 points. That's been Indiana's one-two punch in this game. Wise added a three a couple possessions ago, but it's really been about Penn and Duganey. Tough possession for Indiana. Good defense by Minnesota, getting a couple blocks on that sequence and now they will have the basketball and Indiana still has to foul uh, they have updated it so it's three team fouls so Indiana has to foul two more times to send Minnesota to the line and you would imagine that Minnesota is not going to let the ball into the hands of Taye Balo who's the worst free throw shooter on the floor but even then she's 63 percent yeah, if you're Indiana, this has got to be viewed as a blessing or a curse. Yes, you have to foul twice, but you ha that also means you have two chances to try to get a turnover before you foul. You could be aggressive yes. if you're Indiana Extremely defensively. Aggressive. Well, not anymore. Yeah. For the second straight game, this happened at Nebraska too. Jalen Penn commits, uh, it's going to be on Warden, but they commit a foul on the inbound. So no. The inbound, it's loose. Popped up into the air and Warthen has it. Warthen to the basket, lays it in, and a foul. And Indiana's not dead yet. Talk about unexpected contributions. Warthen, who's played better in more playing time lately, comes up with a huge steal and lamb. She gets Indiana within one with 29 seconds left. Kiana Warthen to the hoop and one. And you can only imagine Ali Papperg's watching in the locker room and is stoked at that last sequence. Warden has 28 points on the season. 18 of them have come in the last five games. Missed the free throw. The ball is loose. Gulbe has it. Jump ball. And possession will stay with Indiana. Just effort that time. Alexa Gulbe, she's been unafraid to get her body on the floor, diving for loose balls all night, and makes the biggest play of the night to this point to give Indiana a chance to tie or possibly take the lead here. Now, if you're Indiana, it's a two-point game, 26 seconds left. You don't want to hold for one, obviously, because you're down a bucket. I'm looking at what's worked for Indiana. Yaney going to the hole and trying to kick out to Jalen Penn if she's open, or Brenna Wise if she's open. Just a little bit of driving kick, trying to get into the lane and score. Hoosiers have all the momentum, unless you don't need a three here to win because Indiana's the one on the team on the comeback. You could ride momentum into overtime and try to win the game. Hoosiers, though, just need any bucket they can find, obviously. 10-0 run for the Hoosiers since they were down 61 to 49 with about four minutes to go. They have surged late 
And somehow, Jack, they have the basketball down by two. Grace Berger did check in for Warthen, so it's Berger, Penn, Yaney, Wise, and Ghoul Bay for the Hoosiers. Who has to take the shot? I'm going Jalen Penn. Penn has 18 points in the second half. She's 5 of 11 from the floor in the last two quarters. So while 5 of 15 isn't great on the night, 1 of 5 from 3, she's been able to get herself going enough to where without Allie Petberg, she's been the hot hand over the last month or so. I think she's your best option. So the Hoosiers with 26 seconds have the ball down 2. The inbound is to Berger. Yaney comes to get it. Penn, an open three! Off the mark, and Bell grabs the board, and she's fouled. Well, you got the shot you want if you're Indiana. Jalen Penn got an open three, but that's just kind of been the night she's had from beyond the arc. One of six from three now, and it now looked, Hoosiers need to hope for some missed free throws. It looked like a bowling alley underneath with bodies flying everywhere, but it produced an open look for Jalen Penn. It doesn't fall, and now Bell, who is 8 of 13 today, is at the line. The first is pure. Not the best free throw shooter percentage-wise, but in terms of who you want at the line if you're Minnesota, this is exactly the woman you want in, in Bell. You're All-American, your star player. You want her deciding the fate of the game. The second free throw, no good. Indiana has it. No, is that a jump ball? It is, and Minnesota gets possession back. We've seen two phenomenal hustle plays to draw jump balls in the last 15 seconds. The first one by Ghoul Bay, this one by Bello and the Gophers, and each have been huge momentum-changing, game-changing plays. What a play by Minnesota. They get the basketball back, and with 14 seconds to go, free throws will ice it. They gotta get the ball in bounds. Brunson searching for somebody. They find Bell. And Bell is fouled with 12 seconds to go. Bell was trying to get rid of it to Pitts, but unable to do so. But Bell's had a lot of one of two trips to the free throw line. That would be good enough in this situation. Yes, it would. If they do Hoosiers either way, no matter how much. She, if she hits both of them, you probably need three. But if she goes one and two, quick to try to foul. Got the first one. To put him to perspective how much Bell goes to the line, she's gone to the line 180 times heading into this game. The next closest on her team is 73. That's over 100 more free throw attempts than anyone else on the team. Yeah, Bell gets to the line at game target rate. Right? So the first one went, it's a four point game. Second free throw is good as well, it's a five point game. 12 seconds to go. Yaney with 10. Yaney. All the way to the bucket, scoops and scores with five seconds to go and a timeout called by Minnesota. It's their final timeout of the game with five seconds left. And you'd imagine if they can get the ball in bounds, make one free throw, that's enough. Oh yeah, it absolutely is. Hoodger did a good job of getting a quick bucket. Would have been better if it was a three, obviously, because then you could, uh, you would force Minnesota to hit two free throws to make it a two possession game, but I can understand just trying to get points as quickly as you can and dealing with the rest of it later. So Hoosiers need to come up with a turnover or get lucky on the free throw line. I'm, I I would not bet on Minnesota missing two straight free throws though with how often this team gets to the charity show. So five and a half seconds to go. Minnesota leads by three. Indiana will have to force some sort of defensive takeaway. Minnesota, because of the timeout, advances it up across half court. Ghoul and, and her length could provide a little bit of issue for Bell trying to throw the ball in. Bell looking for somebody. They lob it in. There's a foul off the ball. It's on Worth, and it's going to send their best free throw shooter, Destiny Pitts, to the line. Tough break for the Hoosiers. They the, ball the ball was in inbounded to Taya Bello. And she's the worst free throw shooter on the floor for the Golden Gophers. Instead, you send Be Pitts, who has been the best free throw shooter over the course of the season for Minnesota. So Pitts is at the line. Might have to readjust the clock here. They may say that the foul is going to be called before, before the ball was touched, which would put it back at 5.5 instead of 5.0. 
Well, quick discussion, and you're exactly right, Jack. It's back to 5.5. So you're asking a 76% shooter who's made all seven tonight to miss both if you're Indiana. And that's not going to happen as Pitts hits the first. Berger comes back in for Worthen. Indiana probably needs to call a timeout, advance the ball, hit a three, get a turnover or a foul, and just hope for a miracle, I guess. Pitts, the second free throw doesn't go, and the rebound is collected by Penn. No, they're going to say it's a jump ball. It is Indiana's possession arrow, and they'll call a timeout with 3.4 to go. All a bit of a... Feels like a formality at this point. If you're Minnesota, you cannot foul, though. Yeah, you can't foul on a three, obviously. But I'm in the end, I honestly go for a quick two. Try to get a cut towards the basket, throw it in, quick layup where minimal time comes off the clock, and then foul before the ball gets inbounded, just trying to save time and hope for a miss and a desperation three. Other than that, or a miraculous four-point play on a three, I don't see how Indiana could win. Heck of an effort by Minnesota today. They were comfortably ahead by 8 to 12 points for most of that third and fourth quarter. Indiana makes a surge, but Minnesota answers back. They hit their free throws. They make defensive stops. They get offensive boards, and that's a recipe for success. Oh, yeah, and they've led virtually the whole game. Indiana's last lead was when it was 4 to 3 in the opening minutes. So Minnesota has been in complete control of the ball game, looking to close out a third straight Big Ten victory. Yaney will inbound. The inbound is to Ghoul Bay. Out to Jalen Penn, who tries to draw the foul. It doesn't work, and this one's over. Minnesota with a huge road win. That's two straight road victories for the Gophers. They win 65 to 61, and they'll improve to 16 and seven on the season five and seven in Big Ten.